thank you so much uh first of all for like having me the opportunity to like really have this conversation with you today like uh i've been following your work and really as someone from south sudan that really inspired me so much uh to be able to see like you know people like you doing like some cr- incredible stuff you know when people think that we just there to like survive but we can also like really uh contribute uh to you know uh, to the world to the economy and everything like that so and that's why like i started my podcast the reason was just to have a space where i can have conversation with people that inspired me over the years and people mm-hmm. i can be able to look up to you know most of the time so my first question i always ask my guests is like it doesn't change and people know it it's like you know why didn't you give up you know uh, after doing the yeah. work that you're doing right now like you know people think that you wake up in the morning and you're doing what you're doing but it's more than that like you know like what why why didn't you give up like that's that's my <laughs> yeah i mean i mean first of all i should say it's mm. really exciting to also meet you I and mean, i followed mm. you on online and i've just mm. it's fascinating to see people of south Sudanese back, background doing a variety mm. of things as well and i think mm. um there's not a lot of people in gaming and technology mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. it's fascinating that our children also get to see that as a sort of inspiration and not just think they can be not not that it's wrong and not just think that they can be models or sports yeah, stars so they can yeah. be a variety mm-hmm. of, of of talents and mm-hmm. and um and imagination and ambition so yeah i'm really excited to have this Thank conversation mm-hmm. um i think in terms of why i haven't give up i i think the honest answer is i don't know mm-hmm. um I have a strange situation in that what I do professionally mm. is quite different from what to some degree I'm known for. So mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've, I've, I practice as a commercial lawyer. I, I worked mm. predominantly in law that had very little to do with human rights law. So, mm. um, so, but, but I've found myself in this public space of having to push back around stories and stereotypes mm-hmm. um, that try to link communities to just, one particular identity mm-hmm. and especially a negative one so because you know because i know living in that community that there are mm-hmm. a variety of stories of survival of success of mm-hmm. just being a normal person and um, i think part of it was almost an automatic reaction to push back to say this is not the whole story it's mm-hmm. not even half of the story um, and it's um, and it's in fact wrong to construct a whole community um, mm-hmm. as being uh, through just one metrics, um, which represent less than one percent of their population. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's just more for me. I think personally, it was just it felt unjust and wanted to correct that record. But I also have two small kids who I tremendously believe in. Mm-hmm in the influences that are around them would impact their sense of self and their, and their sense of self-worth. And I, and I want my children to be able to at the very least grow up in a world in which they don't Mm -hmm. think they're less than human because, um, because somebody else get to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. So I think in, in a, in a, in a long form, um, I, I got involved because I wanted to tell Mm -hmm. the other stories that weren't being told. And that's, that's Mm -hmm. what kept me going. Wow, that's that's really amazing. I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine a few a uh, few months ago, and I was like, you know, uh, that that's a sense of like, you know, doing something that you know when you have somebody you look after, right? And when you when you actually like doing something because you care about somebody, it kind of help you a lot because that's what you're looking for, and 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 you want like the future to like you know be better, and that's why like sometimes like you know, if I don't make it, then it's gonna be worse for those that comes you know uh, after me. So I think that's why, like, you know, the work you're doing is really uh, very important, yeah. I think certainly. I think we all have a responsibility to make their lives for the next generation easier, you know, Mm -hmm. just as those who went before us Mm -hmm. um, did things that made it easier for us today. Whether it's, Mm -hmm. you know, in the United States, we see the impact of the civil rights movement, not just in the United Mm -hmm. States, but across the world, you know, what Mm -hmm. it was able to inspire across across the world in terms of people perception of what their human rights are mm. and that they have a right to fight for it so i feel that i've been i have directly and indirectly inherited mm. um a world that people have contributed into changing and so mm. there is a, a personal responsibility that we leave something behind that is 
a, a more fair and more equitable world. But mm. even beside the, that big picture, I think fundamentally mm. for me, it's just being trying to be a good human being, you know, just trying to, <laughs> yeah, trying mm. to um, live up to my own principles as best as I can um, and, and trying to, um, you know, not, not care too much about necessarily the legacy you leave behind in that, mm-hmm. in that sense, but to be proud of the person that I, I will be on that day when I lie on my deathbed and, and, yeah. and mm-hmm. think, well, I actually gave this life a good shot. You know, mm-hmm. I gave it the best shot I could and I've got nothing left to give, you know. Uh, perspective, uh, a, a lack of knowledge or like, you know, because a lot of people sometimes do not understand certain things. Is it because they are, they are not aware of what, or what they're supposed to do? Like in, in, in order for us to talk about it, well, like, what, what do you think about that? Um, I think, I think for those people who are interested mm. in telling racist stories or mm. discriminatory stories, I think some of them know what they're doing. I think there is sadly in this world, mm-hmm. still a lot of traction, um, towards demonizing and dehumanizing people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's not helped by the current media environment that I think media and political environment that we're in, where things mm-hmm. seems a lot seem to be like seem to be quite a lot of tension um Mm -hmm. so that's one but i think for those who who want to participate or feel that they should participate i think there are some significant challenge to participation Mm -hmm. in public Mm -hmm. public space you know for example to be honest with you i would have rather just be a a, a really good commercial lawyer you know Mm -hmm. i i love the practice i thought it was intellectually stimulating it was interesting I would have just loved to do that. You know, that's what I went to technically mm-hmm. to some degree went to school for, but then um, I just couldn't focus on my law practice because yeah. at the same time there was an election campaign that was demonizing mm-hmm. Sudanese Australian communities. And, you know, it does, it, and, I, and, you know, we look very different. We're very tall and very dark skinned. So it wasn't like you could hide being exactly. Sudanese, right? Mm-hmm. So it was inescapable. So, in a way, so I think when I talk about the barriers for people to engage in change making, mm-hmm. I think they are real. You know, for example, I think for me, it, it's had a huge impact on my pro- professional career, yeah. um, including my decision to eventually leave leave legal practice because it becomes really unsustainable to kind of do all that community advocacy work mm-hmm. and to still be present for um, to do to do your legal work. And I also think that there are challenges in terms of what you receive because if you speak up Mm. you will get backlash you know you will get backlash and for me (laughs) whether that's backlash online or Mm. racist backlash Mm. or you know Mm. in in different spaces you and 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 i i can understand why people wouldn't want to carry that around it's it's it it can get very heavy you know and it can get very exhausting especially in this sort of social political spaces where Mm -hmm. by definition nothing is neutral in in those spaces everything is Mm -hmm. debatable right so it is always going to be full of tension Um, and I think the third part I think is for many people who come here as as migrants you're already like dealing with an app you just want to be able to get your job pay your bills look after Mm -hmm. your kids and mm-hmm. so I, I can I can get all that barriers to participation um, because because I have done it long enough to understand that it is it is it can require a very high price to pay. So maybe mm-hmm. that's why people don't don't get in get engaged is is the price they have to pay. And and I think it's also like uh, it, it, it depends on the definition of what you want to achieve as well. You know, of course, other people might know they like the price to pay. Uh, but again, like this, there's, there's, there's a lot of sustainability that you have to like maybe go through you and you have to understand that so and i mean like it's pretty good so like why do you think like you know diversity and inclusion is something that is really really like uh very important for a lot of people to to understand yeah i think <clears throat> i think for me it's yeah. not even why diversity and inclusion is is yeah. important it's just the yeah. reality diversity is the reality we yeah. live in a diverse yeah. world we live in diverse yeah. communities yeah. and as a result and 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 I'm and I don't believe that talent and intelligence only comes from a particular group of people. Group of people. Yeah. So if we live in a diverse, if we live in diverse community and a diverse mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. and we continue to see that you know just a particular group of people making it, yeah. yet we know that talent and intelligence is doesn't belong to one group, right. mm-hmm. then there is something wrong with the system that continue to produce you know mm-hmm. only uh, mm-hmm. predominantly one set of people as a result. So. To me, I think sometimes diversity and inclusion is this mm. is, is sort of discusses this um, 
a side issue that we bring into the conversation, whereas in mm. fact it should be the conversation because it it should be the fact that we ref, we are merely mm. reflecting the society we are in because when we do so, mm. <clears throat> we are able to serve those community better. We are able to respond better to issues in our own community. We're better able to understand our societies, you mm. know, because it is it is it is it is strange that you know for example in a country like australia which boasts mm-hmm. australia boasts all the time as being the most successful mm-hmm. multicultural society in the world you know but if you look across our our leadership scope you know you look at the courts you look at the parliament you look at mm-hmm. private sector it is predominantly white in the mm-hmm. most successful yeah. multicultural society in the world so i think it's it, it raises a question about um how do communities prioritize mm-hmm. diversity and inclusion not as a, a side issue but as a central issue to um to how we operate as a country or as a nation mm-hmm. or as a people mm-hmm. so for me i don't i i yeah I, I i don't yeah i think it's important but i also think that it shouldn't even be that important it should just be the norm no, <laughs> it should just exactly. be the norm because it's mm-hmm. normal to live in a diverse society it should be normal mm-hmm to see that diversity really f- reflected in corridors of power mm. and in, in, you know, in other s- social areas or economic areas. Now you mentioned something very important. I love it when you talked about diversity, uh, thinking about like when you, you talk about uh, talent and intelligence, you know, they're not just from a particular, <laughs> uh, you know, area or particular people. And that's why I always say that, you know, talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. So, but mm-hmm. where is that opportunity? Because there's a system that actually like, you know, restricts it an individual or people not to have access to that. So uh, with that, like is, so there's such a new community in Australia, like how is like, how are the young people? Well, like, you know, what's, what the, what's your hope? Like what I know, like some of them are doing great, you know, the yeah, athletes and this, oh, you know, I am yeah. tremendously hopeful. Like yeah. I know that the media, the media coverage isn't, but yeah. I'm tremendously yeah. hopeful. Like we are a country, we are a community that has been in this country since 2005, I think yeah. the late, mm-hmm. so no mm-hmm. more than 20 years, right? And yet we've produced, we've already produced somebody who has captained the Australian mm-hmm. football team, football team, you know, um, soccer team. We call it soccer over here, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we already have young people playing in the Australian mm. national soccer team. Mm. We've got young people represented in um, in well, the United in States in basketball. Mm. Yeah. We've got, you know, some of our young people have become mm. like models of the year. Mm. And we've got poets, we've got singers, we've got mm. mums who are, you know, working two, three jobs and buying homes when 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 it's bec- when it has become almost unaffordable to buy a house in oh. Australia. The single mothers who are working two, three jobs to be able to buy a home, you know, and those are the story that doesn't mm-hmm. get to the media. So I think that, yes, there are tremendous challenges in our community, but I don't think those challenges are based on race. Mm-hmm. I think those are socioeconomic factors that makes those challenges, mm-hmm. you know, more apparent. Um, and, and the lack of focus on those socioeconomic issues, whether it's mm-hmm. unemployment, whether it's structural discrimination and others um and then focusing on race i think that's what misses mm. the point right but for me i am tremendously hopeful because i i go to shopping centers you know i get served by sudanese young kids you know whether mm. they are in mcdonald's or whether they're in mm. safeway or whether they are just living their life and these people deserve to not be channeled through mm-hmm. the story mm. of failure <clears throat> you know they deserve to be recognized for their hard work and and for their resilience. And that's what I, I, I am mm-hmm. hopeful about, you know. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't have challenges. I, I do think Not we much. have challenges. Mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. need to work tremendously hard, especially mm-hmm. towards, you know, um, the, the, the representation of young boys, young mm-hmm. men um, in the prison systems. Um, we need to, uh, we, we definitely have to work on that because I would rather not see even one sa- single South Sudanese South kid yeah. not realize <laughs> their potential, right? So, um, so uh, for me, it's constantly a way of balancing those two, realizing that they mm-hmm. are problems that we need to address, but not taking away the hope and the resilience and the achievement and the imagination and the intelligence yeah. that exist in this community, because that mm-hmm. gets taken away a lot. Yeah, you, you talk about, uh, you mentioned about resilience, and uh, I always think about it like even in time of trouble, in time of trouble, you know, like uh, resilience mm-hmm. is very important. And how does how did like the, the pandemic affected you or affected like you know the work that you're doing in terms of like advocacy and stuff like that? Mm. 
Yeah, I the pandemic was really we, we had in Melbourne, I think, the worst lockdown in the world. Yeah. Like we had one of the <laughs> toughest lockdowns where yeah. we were restricted not to even leave five kilometers, you know, within our own mm. sort of from where you live. Mm. And so that was really, really hard. Um, it was hard because um I was just having to work and look after my kids, like everybody yeah. else, it was a mm-hmm. struggle. But I have to say, I also found the um the lockdown almost as um as if it it rescued me in some ways from oh, mm. uh, um from from the kind of life that I was building you know I had become so busy and sustainably busy mm-hmm. I was you know running around all the time um barely resting barely looking after mm. myself you know um and and you know I ended up writing an article for the Guardian about it about mm. about how I had sort of um I felt as though I was working myself towards collapsing at some point because oh, physically wow. probably mm, my body yeah. couldn't take it. Mm. I was working really long. I was working until late and then waking up very early. And I think the pandemic had for when everything was being canceled and we mm. all had to work from home um, and I didn't have to, you know, travel to work. Yeah. I got back about, you know, four hours of my day. And what wow. I started doing was I'll drop my kids to childcare and then I'll go for a walk for about an hour. And after that wow. hour, mm. I'll, you know, maybe, you know, meditate and then I'll try and um, write. And I found that that slowing down was so, so important to give me a vision of, of a different kind of mm. life. You know? mm. And I, yeah. I sort of, I think when you've come from, you know, the, the background of war and displacement and as a result, the lack of opportunities, and then mm. you now come to a country where you feel like you've got all these opportunities. Oh, <laughs> You just want to throw yourself a hundred percent with them, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I yeah. was doing that, and, and and it was all good, but it was not balanced, and it was not sustainable at all. And I uh, and I think the pandemic showed me that I could still do much, and still concentrate yes. without mm-hmm. feeling as if I had to sacrifice my health and my peace of mind as a result. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm learning. I think that's the lesson, the biggest lesson I'm I'm constantly taking from. Uh, the, the pandemic experience is, you know, mm. often asking myself, exactly. um, yeah. you know, um, should I really say yes to this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know wow. I mean, yeah. Yeah. so that's been really good. Yeah. That's been wow. really, really. Good. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, that, that's 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 really amazing. Yeah, I remember, like, you know, before the pandemic, uh, that that helped me a lot, a lot, especially like, you know, being able to like have time for myself, as you said, mm. uh, being able to like really, you know, think about like reflecting on things that I, I couldn't even have time to think about you know yeah and, and and that's why I ended up actually like starting my own foundation because I knew that I have oh. like yeah so that I have like enough time to like, do things. things yeah <laughs> so yeah so it kind of like so uh, my foundation we are building a tech school in Uganda so where kids wow. can le- yeah where kids can learn how to like uh, program make games and uh yeah, it's been it's been good. Uh, uh, we had like I would love to go see it one day. Uh, yeah, yeah for sure. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. So yeah, okay. Like going back to like you know the time you came to Australia and uh, to the person you are uh, become right now. Like, was there that moment that you were like, yeah, like I I'm, I'm gonna make it. I'm just I'm I'm just gonna live the lo- the life that I can sustain. No, like, you know, no, not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I think I think that's a very American thing, right? Like that yeah, yeah. thing. I'm I think there's a very American thing about yeah. it. But I think I always just was the kind of person that mm. this. I have a lot of self doubt. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't come out. And I said that because I think it's important for you know young people or people mm. in this space that want to do stuff to know that the yeah, self doubt that you can it. still do things will self doubt. So I always had self doubt. I always doubted whether. I had done enough research, I'd done mm. enough work, but I thought, you know, but I, for me, I just always do what I needed to do despite the fear. I just turned mm. up. That was my thing. Oh, wow. You know, I was still afraid, but I would turn up. And um, and I remember actually telling a friend this. I got an mm. opportunity to um to give a speech at the National Press Press mm. Club, which is sort of the sort of the biggest platform in the mm. country in mm. terms of um um, speaking up and I remember call, calling a friend saying I feel terrified going yeah. there but I know I'm still gonna turn up tomorrow yeah. and give that speech wow. so I think it's always it's always been working with my with my mm. fear um but I think I always had an attitude of 
I always knew I was the underdog in oh, a yeah. way. I, mm. I always knew I was an underdog and most, or at, at least underestimated. And instead of taking that as an insult, I just thought, now I'm going to just prove you wrong. Oh, so I think it's just having those, I think it's very useful to have mental tools mm. in your head that allows you to um, respond a particular way or create a narrative that empowers you that instead of mm. disempowered you right, so for yeah. me things like if i realize in a particular context someone underestimate me instead of taking mm. offense being like well mm. that's an opportunity mm-hmm. to really you know show them that uh you know they made a mistake or mm. um whenever i face a serious problem i normally tell myself the attitude i adapt is as important as what happened next you mm-hmm. know no, no i know that saying have being positive doesn't you know, make the situation go Similar away, way. but it definitely exactly. influence mm. wh- how you will approach it. And mm. if you mm. approach it already defeated in attitude, you're almost, in my view, halfway you know, sure. towards yeah. losing. Yeah. So I, I have, I do have this sort of mental tools that I keep working on to to try and get where I want to get. But mm. in terms of thinking, I never thought anywhere that I like I would mm. make it. I just, mm. I just did stuff. You know, yeah. I just yeah. I just I did mean, stuff. That's really, that's really very good. That's a very good mindset though. Like a lot of people don't understand that because like when you have that, it kind of puts you in a way to like think, you know, to be able to like find, okay, what is the solution to this? What can I do to mm. make this happen? So, right. But if, if you don't have that, and then it's going to like really, really, it's, it's going to affect you. And a lot of people, I'm, I'm glad that you have that. A lot of people think that even like, you know, during when with our parent long time ago you know mm. they didn't have like hospital they didn't have anything but if you get an injury they were going to get salt and like <laughs> mm. and then they would put salt on your wound and then that's going to heal it you know what i'm saying but they didn't they didn't have the right tools right but they had their like you know they, they were able to bring solution to be able yeah. to like put that yeah i think your mind is mm. is a tool i think your mind is such mm. a, an important tool like i mm. I always look at, you know, just as you will get runners mm. to protect yeah. your feet, right? Mm. You need to sort of figure out what are sort of mental resources that just you can tap into, you know, when you've got, you, you've gone challenged. For me, mm. I listen to a lot of stoic, you know, you know, um, podcasts. I listen to, what's his mm. name? Um, Ryan Holiday, um, yeah. uh, mm. um, the Daily Stoic podcast i read mm. a quite a bit of story work i read as a form of right. building right. resilient in fact i read you know and i and I, and i think these are things that have really really held me in good state the idea mm. of always looking out for for those sort of inner resources mm. to supplement what you have already whether it's in terms mm. of um build up resilience or 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 lived experience, always mm. figuring out how other people are doing things and figuring out how you can think about it. Mm. Um, I think most problems in life, you can figure them out. <laughs> you know, I wow. think sometimes mm. you know, I, I, that's my, I do think so. I, and I think that some problems you have to accept defeat and, exactly. and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Learning to accept defeat is, I think it's a, also another important mental tool because it stops yeah. you from wasting your energy <laughs> exactly. on something mm-hmm. you cannot control, right? And you're just thinking, well, I am not all knowing all <laughs> how I lose too, and that's fine, you know. Wow. Um, and yeah. there will be another yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, knowing your limit is it's, it's very important in, in any journey. Yeah. Like you know, you you can like. If you know a tree, you cannot climb from the top. You know, if you want to climb it, you at least bring something to support you so that you can, you know, be able to climb it. So I think that it's really very important to like, you know, know your limit and, and understand where, what you can do and what you cannot do. And, and, yeah. and that kind of, yeah, that kind of help you in your journey. So what, what is important for you? Like, uh, so the journey and the, uh, you know, the journey and the destination, like what, how do you like define those things? Yeah. You say, hey, you know, there's a destination, there's a journey I'm going through. Like, how do you like? There is a beautiful, <laughs> there is a beautiful um, poem by, by, yeah. um, by a poet called David White. And, you know, mm. he says, and I think I, I might get the right along, but it's mm. something along that you are, you're more beautiful in your simple way to find, mm. you know, you're more beautiful in your simple wish to find a way than any destination you might reach. And I wow. think that is like, you know, um, that helped me sort of conceptualize what what life is about, you know, because mm-hmm. I had always been about the destination, which wow. is the goal. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do this 10 step because I want to get to that goal. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But um, but then you realize funny thing in life is that whenever you get to that goal, the goal move. Now you need mm-hmm. another goal. Mm-hmm. Now you need another mm-hmm. goal. And now you need another goal. And I think wow. it is really the journey. It's what you learn in the process yes. of getting to each goal that it's important. For example, for me, having lived such a, a huge part of my life, you know, mm-hmm. going after goal was come to mm-hmm. Australia, finish high school, go mm-hmm. to uni, do mm-hmm. law, get no. admitted into legal practice, become a lawyer. Like mm-hmm. it was ticking off these oh. things. And I realized after I had ticked them all off, they didn't really give me the sense of meaning, the sense of foundational meaning that I was searching for. Like there was the the sort of outside Mm -hmm. meaning, which Mm -hmm. was good and sort of the recognition, which was fine. But in in terms of a more inner foundational meaning, it wasn't there at all, you know? And I realized that, I realized that the joy actually was in the journey, in In the the trying Mm -hmm. itself. And what I had learned through the process about who not only I was, but what about myself I feel I needed to change, you know? Um, Mm. And and I think because I've begun to pay attention to the journey more than the goal itself, Mm. I feel like I'm a happier, more um, grounded person and also perhaps more humble person as a result, you know? So I'm, I'm definitely... For the journey, for the journey, More than the <laughs> yeah, enjoy, enjoy the journey. It's it's really very it's really very important. I remember like a lot of people ask me like uh, so when I start like uh, learning programming, and yeah. I I would I would walk three three hours per day to go and charge my computer when I was back in uh, in the refugee camp in Uganda, and wow. every day like yeah every day I would be happy you know every day you wouldn't like see me getting annoyed because I really enjoyed that, you know, that moment. I, I wasn't like doing it because. How did you hey, even get into it? Like, how did you get into yeah. the program? <laughs> what what you to be like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. I, I always like, honestly, like also the first time I saw a laptop was around 2007. So during mm-hmm. the, uh, during a, 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 a refugee registration. So they were registering us and then we went to the line mm-hmm. and, uh, and, the, and then the UN uh, employees that were using a computer I remember asking my mama like wow what is that and she was like that's a computer and like yeah. and then from that moment I like that one I was like wow like because I love electronics you know when I was a kid I would try to play with them and from there I was like from that moment I'm like I was like I want to use it one day so uh, to cut the story short like you know I, I asked about my mom she bought for me my first computer and then um, and then I my friend installed for me a video game called uh, Grand Theft Auto so like oh yeah yeah, GTA, yeah so i've heard about it but i've never played it yeah yeah so <laughs> so i so i came back home and then I, I i opened it and i was like wow like what is this i never thought actually game or created by people i thought they just like fall from heaven and stuff like that mm. so yeah so when i started playing it uh, that's the moment i was like wow this is so powerful and you know it's it's, it's also like a violent game and from yeah. that moment it was like wow like if i can make game for like you know, for like helping people for education and stuff like that, that would, they would be mm. amazing. So having that idea was like, okay, what is the next? So that means that I need to learn how to program. I need to learn how to make game. And then yeah. I start teaching myself. And then uh, that's how I made my first, uh, my first, uh, my first game. So, so what I'm trying to say is that like that journey, uh, w- w- I, I enjoyed it. It was more than just, thinking, yeah. Hey, I'm going to be in America. I'm going to have a game studio. I'm going to like yeah. all this, you know, I'm going to interview <laughs> you one day. Like that was like, but I'm still like, I, I just enjoyed that journey. And I think that, you know, when you say it, you really say it so well, like I, yeah, it, it, it's pretty good. Yeah. I also think like if when, when it's about yeah. the journey, right? Like mm-hmm. you accept mm-hmm. yeah. that there is always something to learn because yeah. you can never mm-hmm. part of, part of it being about a journey. It's, it's being mm. in some sort of adventure mm. a destination is pretty clear when you get yeah, there yeah but a journey you do not know what you will meet you do not know what will mm. challenge you and you don't know what you might discover about yourself I think mm. yeah I think it's it's fascinating it's a really fascinating um mm. thing to see that someone who didn't know much about a computer feeling as though you get mm. to this point where you're actually mm. making games now you know yeah, and not only just yeah. making games but creating an environment for others yeah. to learn mm-hmm. uh, you know the skills That's to be right. able to exactly. to utilize not just for more yeah. than gaming I feel like the world I almost think all schools should teach coding exactly. I think it should just be it's basic a <laughs> so in, in a okay. really technological world that yeah. all kids have access yeah, to coding as, a, as, a, as, a, as early as possible so what has changed in the last uh, 
thought uh, in the last 20 years when it comes to like people understanding the way of life, when it comes maybe like the work you're doing now, advocacy, talking about things that are really matters, what, what do you think has changed for the last 20 years? Especially like maybe we have a people that are making policies that are like maybe 25 now. That means that the, uh, the system that were already there, they're trying to be again, is it? What do you think has changed and what, how do you think that a lot of things are going to be changing in the, in the next couple of 20 years? I think technology has changed a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think technology has, has changed um, for good and for bad. I think mm-hmm. it has a huge influence. I think if it wasn't for technology, we probably would not have met. I would have not have seen what you do yeah. and mm-hmm. would not have seen what I do. So I think, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it, it's it's that that's going to be a big game changer. I don't mm-hmm. know about what, I think social issues, you know, mm-hmm. whether they're politics or race mm-hmm. or economics i think they are really really sort of um tricky problems so each generation has to figure it out almost anew Mm -hmm. all the time so i don't i don't i don't know i don't know what the next generation will 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 bring into this conversation Mm -hmm. they are definitely part of these conversations that are encouraging you know Mm -hmm. um they are part of it that are almost um concerning you know in some Mm. part of the world it seems like we're going back in terms Mm -hmm. of an appreciation for human rights and the necessity Mm -hmm. of protecting human rights you know it Mm -hmm. seems that um particularly in western democracies there there have been seems to be a reversion back to sort of nationalistics you know um almost racialized politics of Mm -hmm us first and everybody else can figure out for themselves Mm -hmm. and i think that attitude of um hyper individualism or hyper nationalism because i mm. think nationalism can be good to some degree gives yeah. people a mm. sense of who they are and where exactly. they belong right? mm. but i think a hyper you know a hyper version of it especially in a world where we have to solve problems like climate change together mm-hmm. it mm. creates a really 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 dangerous position because then there is barely any action mm. on climate change because is you know somehow we are, we are thinking in silos mm-hmm. and trying to protect protect our silos as opposed to thinking about what collectively as humanity we could potentially um lose and i think climate mm. change exposes the dangers of the kind of the but world yeah. we live in mm. yeah. you know so i don't yeah. know i i am hopeful i'm always hopeful i don't think mm. there's very there's a lot to do with um hopelessness <laughs> you know yeah, it's exactly. not a very <laughs> useful emotion yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you maintain hope and you do the, the best you can do for the part of the world that, that yeah, you yeah. find mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, 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 and you know, uh, to talk about like, you know, it's with, with the climate change and, you know, uh, crisis that are going on right now. And, and I feel like humanity should be like the most important thing and it shouldn't be like where you're from. It shouldn't be like you're from the Western, you're from the Eastern, you're from like somewhere mm-hmm. in Africa or, or like as long as people are suffering in that area we have to like all pay attention uh and and for example like you know what is happening in ukraine right now it's it's it's, mm. it's not it's not good at all but i also see like there is so much support from the people mm. when i know also like you know they are also when you go maybe to ethiopia there's so much going on there and people are not given the same energy so what what do you think is a different what's what's a different that's a hard question i mm. i still think that sadly um, I mean, I support the Ukrainian people, and yeah, I think yeah. having mm. watched, is, yeah. they are mm. they're resilient, you know, and yeah, they and they fight back. You yeah. are left with a sense of admiration for their strength, exactly. you know. Um, mm. um, but I also know that the world would have not reacted the way it reacted to Ukraine, mm. um, as as it, not not only the world would not have. We know mm. the world have not, mm. you know, reacted that way whether it is in terms of Afghanistan, whether yeah. it is mm. in terms of um, Syrian refugees, mm. you know, whether it is in, in relation to Iraqi refugees. Mm. You know, so we have seen in, in a way what, what the conflict reaffirmed to me is that we still in still have a hierarchy of human beings mm. in which there are certain human beings who humanity is valued far more than others Mm -hmm. and and this is not something i'm making up like the conversation Mm -hmm. some of the journalists were literally saying that it was so bad to see what was happening in ukraine because it was Mm -hmm. affecting you know blue eyes and blonde hair children and you were thinking i have you know black hair and brown eyes kids i think that they deserve 
and equal humanity mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so the idea that there is a group of children that are okay to see suffer and a group of children mm-hmm. that we sh- cannot tolerate to see them mm-hmm. suffer reinforced to me that, you know, sadly, we still have a world in where where race still plays a role. Yeah, and yeah. that's mm-hmm. really depressing to think about it, you know, that as humanity, we're still there. And it's and that not only do we live in a world like that, but that that perception shape not only our reaction in terms mm-hmm. of what we can afford, you know, in terms of financial or military help, but it also shape our level of empathy, empathy. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're less empathetic to the group of people. It's just it's a very yeah, it's a very um that's a very depressing part. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. It's really... <laughs> Yeah. So apart from that, like what, uh, what, we sh- what should we know about you? What, you know, what do you do for fun? What do you? <laughs> yeah, I, oh yeah, that's a good question. I, <laughs> I just read, a, I read, I read mm. for fun. Um, so that's one, I know that's very boring. Um, I, what do I do? I write. Okay. Um, yeah. And, um, and then beside those sort of serious hobbies, I, I go for a run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe. I mean, I'm a, I'm generally a very sort of boring person. <laughs> I think I like most, spend, I, yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually, I'm an, I am actually really, I know I'm actually, mm. I accept, I'm really boring, but I do spend some time buying stuff I like online. Like I'll get yeah, something yeah. nice mm. to wear or I'll get some mm. good shoes or I would, but yeah, but generally I think, um, yeah. I also feel like at this stage, I don't know how old you mm. are. I think for me, mm. I'm, I'm turning 35 in November. Mm. Mm. So I, I feel like at this stage of on life, you're caught between Even, not being yeah. a child mm-hmm. and not being old enough to be old. So you just, exactly. you're you're just, just trying to balance it. <laughs> kind of working and yeah, so you yeah. have to be serious to work and, and get things done. So yeah. perhaps I'm mm-hmm. caught, um, caught on that. But I think, yeah, I think I'm, but I'm also, I would like to think that I'm more, I, I think I'm less serious than I come out on mm. when I'm on TV or TV giving speeches yeah. or yeah. things like that. I have, you know, I yeah, so that's it i think people don't realize that i'm a very i'm i'm, I'm silly mm, and i can no. be what <laughs> i will definitely think i am um i'm sort of a weird person yeah like weird in the sense that i don't belong with most of my age mates because i'm too yeah. serious i've always exactly. been too serious mm. and i'm you know and i'm not old enough to hang out with old people so i'm always in this awkward space of yeah. trying to figure it out yeah oh wow what about wow. you uh, for Besides me, I don't miss a lot. <laughs> uh, actually, a lot of people actually think that I play video game, but I don't because I really don't have the yeah. time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm always on my computer making them, so I don't have the time to like play games, uh, video game. But um, I love like uh, I love hiking. Sometimes I'll find time to like just go hike, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just go downstairs there, and there's a really big park. I would just like walk there. And then I, yeah. I love, yeah, and I love soccer. I mean, football. So I watch it most of the time and go play when yeah. it's the summer. Yeah. It's, uh, who, who do you support? Uh, Manchester United. Like, <laughs> oh, I see. My yeah. sister is a huge Liverpool supporter. Um, oh, wow. And she's constantly sharing stuff about Liverpool. And I don't know how to tell her, just stop. I'm not interested. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a, she's yeah. a huge Liverpool supporter. Yeah. Well, they're, 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 my, they're my huge rivals, actually. They're yeah, like Manchester yeah, and Liverpool, like very, very huge rivals. Yeah. So, uh, my last question is like, uh, what advice would you give to like uh, the diaspora, you know, especially South Sudanese uh, refugees and people like, you know, yeah, who, who just want to like do what they love, you know? Mm. Yeah. I think first is, um, mm. first is, um, don't, don't allow other people, um, sense of what you can achieve be your own measurement of what you can achieve because i think that people like to throw their limitations on others Mm. you know because they think they can't do something they stop you from doing it either because Mm. they actually think oh it's so hard you know so Mm. don't don't they're trying to stop you from from sort of making a mistake or failing or whatever so i would say yeah don't don't let other people um, mm. you know estimations of who you are of what you can do or what your people have been able to do mm. be your starting point you know um second is be ambitious you know especially for young girls yeah, be yeah. ambitious like you know there is um 
that is nothing wrong with being ambitious. Aim high, as high as you can, and mm-hmm. then see where you fail, you know, mm-hmm. um, or where you succeed. Um, and I think um, for me, ambition cu- coupled with a, a constant side of humility of knowing mm-hmm. that you you will never know everything and that you um, you should be willing to learn is mm. a good combination because it allow you to go for what you want, but it also allow you to do it in a way that is not aggressive or insulting or yeah. dehumanizing mm. of other people. Mm. Right. So mm. I think that's it. I think the third is um, failure is good. Mm. Um, uh, we don't look for failure often, but when it's there after having a good cry, figure out what it is that it's trying to teach Mm. you because there's always something to learn um in in when you fail um Mm. the look after yourself um i think we come from a community that is very very resilient Mm. and that's okay but i think we forget that being resilient doesn't mean that we're not still human and Mm that we can struggle and our mental health can struggle and our physical health can struggle and our resilience can run dry. Mm. So if you don't take the time to um, create joy and delight and opportunities in your life that are not about being resilient, you will, I think, crash at some point, you know? So I think looking after yourself and your mental health and your physical health as Mm. an active part of your life is, is sort of the, the, the basis, the foundational basis of, achieving mm. anything because you cannot sustain anything if you're not physically capable or mm. mentally capable of doing and I think it's so easy to leave that as the last thing on the table when it should be the first and thing the first and I'm very good at giving that mm. advice but I'm not very good at keeping it <laughs> um yeah and I think yeah finally um enjoy life like seriously (laughs) like there's a part of us that forget you know there's a part of us that is get caught up in this survival mode right Mm. where it was like i have to do this and i have to do that and like and then we forget that this life is actually meant to be lived Mm -hmm. and to be enjoyed and to be silly and yeah so yeah i mean i i would just love to see more Mm. and more people of of south sudanese background more and more people like you know express their full humanity yeah, which involve mm. periods of high productivity and high achievement mm. but also periods of joy and pain and mm. and delight and the rest yeah well that's that's still really amazing and uh, what is your hope for south sudan like <laughs> well that's what yeah. that's you yeah. left the hardest question to the, yeah. to the last oh my god yeah <laughs> I don't want to, I mean, I want to become really political and say I want both no, people gone. Um, yeah, that's really. probably too political. <laughs> I think my hope for South Sudan is like for an opportunity for the people of South Sudan to finally yeah. know what peace is. You know, mm. I think for a long time we've been denied a sense of peace, you know, a mm. peaceful country. Yeah. And it becomes really hard to build any form of a life when you don't yeah. even mm. have a home and a place to start. So, yeah, I would. I, I just hope for real peace, like just real yeah. peace where South Sudanese people can begin yeah. to thrive and yeah. and be yeah. and, and get to settle and travel the world, not as refugees, but mm. for fun, you know, exactly. and to be mm. tourists and the rest. Yeah, I think that's my biggest wish for South Sudan. Wow. Have you been back? Yeah, I've only been there. Uh, I haven't, I've been there only in 2018, but I haven't been back until today. So my family is yeah. now in Canada. Yeah. Are you yeah. in Canada or in the U.S.? Um, I'm in DC, but my family okay. is based now in uh, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Uh-